Anna Ow. 10, Scary Scott. We all know Scott for being scared of Bonnie after and while he was making the first game. He got jump scared during his testing and honestly ended up having nightmares. Weird. Scott will have nightmares about an animatronic bunny and I'll have nightmares about being tortured and feel it in the morning. Anyway, after this, we didn't really think about Scott being scared by anyone else. However, as reported by Scott himself in a Steam post, during beta testing for this location, he got jump scared by Funtime Foxy. And while it may not have given him nightmares, we don't really know because he didn't say, he did say that this is the scariest jump scare from any of his games. Meaning that according to the creator himself, Funtime Foxy is the scariest animatronic in town. At least by jump scare standards. And that's pretty damn impressive if I do say so myself. And a 9 voice mimic. Moving along to Funtime Foxy's actual abilities, as we learned from the FNAF 6 blueprints, Funtime Foxy is able to actually record parents' voices and sync them in order to lure children to their doom. So, uh, does anyone see the problem with this? That's terrifying. Imagine getting lost while camping or something and then Funtime Foxy mimics your parents' voice to call out to you and then it traps you or you're dead. Or think of what it would do to your parents after it recorded their voice. They wouldn't be of use anymore, right? And if anything, they could just counter it like that classic thing of like, oh, you hear your mom call you from downstairs, but then you hear your mom call you from the other room upstairs saying that's not me. That that would be the scenario if Funtime Foxy didn't kill your parents after you recorded their voices. Actually, Actually, this begs the question, are animatronics able to kill adults? And if so, have they? Because I feel like the, the cops would investigate the deaths of adults less than investigating the deaths of kids. Like, I feel like they would take those murders more seriously than, like, adult murders. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know, I'm not a cop. But other than Henry, have any adults been in the series that ended up getting themselves killed by an animatronic? Probably, but how many? And it ain't Nightmare Fun Time. FNAF ER is my favorite FNAF game, and one that I've played the most. However, the game is damn scary. The pure agony of having to walk through a pitch black Funtime auditorium in virtual reality is one of the worst things that man can experience, and I will forever stand by the fact that VR horror is the worst thing that mankind has created. However, what makes things worse is that for some unexplained reason, when Funtime Foxy jump scares you in their dark room in FNAF VR, they use the nightmare animatronic jump scare sound instead of the one that they would have used in Sister Location. We don't know why, but apparently it's it's not an error because Scott hasn't fixed it in an update or something like that. Also, in the blacklight hard mode version of this level, if you bump into a clone of Funtime Foxy, instead of Foxy jump scaring you, you'll end up getting jump scared by Lolbit. Letting me know that Lolbit's in the game. I didn't know this, and that's pretty damn interesting nonetheless. But um, yeah, I don't know why he uses the nightmare voice. Or sound. Whatever. And it's 7 appearance. Funtime Foxy's color scheme is apparently the inverse of Funtime Freddy, but in all honesty, they're just white and pink instead of white and purple. The animatronic is also 5.9 feet tall and over 200 pounds. It's honestly pretty damn terrifying and makes me shudder at the thought of a 6 foot tall animatronic opening its face and staring down at me menacingly and then eating me. Which may sound like a kink thing, but it's not. It's not, I promise. I swear, I swear, it's not a kink thing. This damn thing, while not having a very menacing exterior, is certainly going to rustle my jimmies if I ever have to stare it down in a dark alley or a dense forest after it's murdered my family. And it's six blueprints. The blueprints we get for Funtime Foxy differs from the others. And the other is something or someone is being contained, like with Funtime Freddy or Baby. However, Funtime Foxy doesn't seem to have any child stuck inside. Instead, I'm here to talk about the list of special features shown in the bottom right corner. The light activation sensor, which lets Funtime Foxy spot victims in dark areas, perfect for hunting at night. A parental voice sync and replay, allowing for Funtime Foxy to record, synchronize and replay your parents' voice, or the voice of others to lure a victim away from a crowd. A variable scent release like the love potion from Harry Potter, letting the animatronic lure kids away with scents if they couldn't record voices. And a remote floor anchor, which lets out a radio signal for tracking purposes and to anchor victims nearby, whatever that means. And it also helps maintain balance and stability. Physical, not mental. Halfway through it in number 5, Mangled. A lot of people seem to think that we have an idea that Funtime Foxy and Mangle are related. If anything, that Funtime Foxy is either a rebuilt version of Mangle, an alternate Mangle model, or that Mangle is a run down and destroyed Funtime Foxy, since Mangle is taken apart and put back together by children on the regular. This is based on the rosy cheek design of both characters, since there isn't really much to look at other than Mangle's face. Well, in Mangle's sense. Funtime Foxy has more going on, but not Mangle. 
I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, like, it would make some kind of sense, but it would also still be kind of an issue, at least in a timeline sense, at least based on how we currently understand the timeline. But what do you think about this? Do you think that Mangle is just a torn up Funtime Foxy? Or do you think that Funtime Foxy is a rebuilt version of Mangle? I mean, maybe it would make sense in a timeline sense. I, I don't know anymore. I'm confused. I've said sense too much. FNAF has broken my brain. Let's just move on. And at four hanging out. Was Foxy the one that hung the scientist in sister location? Since at the end of the game, before going to see Baby and ending up in the scooping room, you end up seeing that there are bodies of two researchers or scientists or whatever they are hanging from the ceiling like they were in every single thumbnail that had to do with sister location. But that begs the question, did the fun times or most of the animatronics who were associated with those sides do the hanging or were they there the whole time? Or maybe it was Baby? Because it kind of just happened and we didn't really think about it too much because what happened after that. Like, were those guys hanging the whole time? Because I thought this place was abandoned when William was, uh, um, stuck between a wall and a hard place. So, where were those scientists? Like, why were they there? Were they hanging there the whole time? We only see them when the light has shined on them, so Foxy could very well have hung them up ages ago. And now it's just like a rotting corpse that somehow stayed together because, you know, FNAF logic. Or the body could be fake. Too bad Foxy isn't Funtime Horsey, though. <laughs> At least then the dude could say he was hung by a horse. And a three soul sucker. In the original FNAF novels, at the very least, we learned that the Funtime animatronics are actually a combination of the metals from the first four victims. The metal that we came to know as Remnant was melted down and turned into the endoskeletons of the Funtimes, but they weren't separated beforehand, so each Funtime animatronic has four, if not five, souls inside them from the original missing children. Baby has an additional one at least, thanks to, you know, scooping Elizabeth. The others have Fritz, Jeremy, Susie, Gabriel, and potentially Cassidy, although I'm not too sure on that one. Meaning that this animatronic is more conflicted than my sister. And trust me, she is very conflicted. <laughs> well, at, at least she was. But she definitely still is and is probably very unstable. She can't accept the fact that One Direction broke up ages ago. It's, it's sad, really. And yes, she's, she's sitting on the couch looking at me angrily and now she's making a very rude gesture with her hands. That's not nice, I'm telling that. And it too, spirit to speech. Just how any Twitch streamer who enjoys a little chaos has text to speech enabled for donations over a specific amount. <clears throat> Afton Robotics has spirit to speech enabled for anything over five spirits, apparently. Since we didn't hear the original five animatronics talk until Ultimate Custom Night, whereas the fun times are talking up a storm, which doesn't really make sense to me because those speech patterns kind of seem reversed. Like, how is it that if they do have the souls of five different kids inside them that they're able to speak so well? Like, is one spirit dominant out of the five? And how does Baby talk? Because she'd have six souls, right? And if that's the case, how is Ennard unable? able to talk, at least from what I remember. If Ennard was speaking, it was just Baby, or I guess Elizabeth's voice. Either way, Funtime Foxy is chatting up a storm in Ultimate Custom Night, but this more so goes for every Funtime animatronic. It's so backwards and confusing. Shouldn't they be the ones with garbled speech and groaning? I mean, like, I get it, it's for Scare Factor in the first game, but still, if one person equals one speech, why is it that five people equal one speech? Finally, in number one, Showtime Schedule. I don't quite understand the whole Showtime mechanic from Ultimate Custom Night, however, I know that it can cause you to lose the night even if you've beaten the game. This is a rare glitch that causes the Showtime Schedule to run past the end of the night, so over 6am. If this happens, you'll end up getting jump scared at the end of the night when it hits 6am, which is incredibly rude because I won, I did it, I survived, and you block me? Freaking rooster blocking piece of crap. Imagine this happening on 5020 mode. Imagine winning the game on the hardest mode, but Funtime Foxy's like, no, nah man, not gonna happen. How rude do you have to be? He and you people thought Foxy was a good guy. Guess again, especially when you figure out that it's like five souls combined into one. It's, it's messed up, okay? I'm offended. And it's end, Funtime Foxy Mama. I saw a couple of comments on the previous part stating that Funtime Foxy is a girl. 
First of all, I'd say robot, so calm down. But secondly, the character's gender was left purposely vague by Scott, using the pronouns for males and females in the Freddy Files book, which definitely caused some confusion in the community. However, I don't know where you got the idea that Funtime Foxy was exclusively female, since in Ultimate Custom Night they are voiced by a man and are using male pronouns exclusively. So in fact, Funtime Foxy is most likely a male. Is it because of like the rosy cheeks and like the pink and stuff? Because dudes can wear pink, dudes can wear makeup, dudes can look however they want. They're also present in the ladies night game mode, but I feel like the voice acting in addition to the exclusive pronouns in Ultimate Custom Nights is, is makes it pretty safe to say male, but I mean again, we still don't know, so don't come in the comments saying don't what? In a nine chasing tail. Funtime Foxy is actually the first and potentially only iteration of Foxy to have a tail, which is really weird and something I didn't realize until someone pointed out in the comments. Somehow, every version of Foxy up until now didn't have a tail, and Funtime Foxy did. I don't know what the purpose of the tail is, maybe it's meant for balance more than the sensors on the bottom of his feet, or if it was just some random design choice by Scott, like, yeah, let's add a tail this time or if it was just meant to be a diversion or just for the lol bits and gigs. <laughs> See what I did there? There is no real explanation as to why Scott made Foxy have a tail all of a sudden, but maybe it was to confuse us on the gender, since maybe tails are associated with elegance and that's typically a more female attribute. Who knows, man? Scott probably doesn't even know anymore himself. He's just like, yeah, I had a tail. They're counting toes, a tail's gonna matter. And at eight, five souls are better than one. Thanks to the FNAF novels, we learn that Funtime animatronics are all possessed by the original group of missing children. Since after learning that the originals were possessed, William melted their endoskeletons down and used this combined metal from all endoskeletons to make the endoskeletons of the Funtimes. Meaning that Funtime Foxy is in theory possessed by Fritz, Gabriel, Mike, Susie, and maybe even Cassidy. And Baby is possessed by all of the above, including Elizabeth, who ends up taking over. Pretty insane if you ask me. I can hardly handle half the soul that I have in my body. Imagine five. God. And it's seven open face plan. The actual structure of the animatronic is fairly interesting. The face opens up to reveal the endoskeleton behind it and jump scares like the one in FNAF VR. There isn't really a definitive answer as to why the animatronics do this, and this remains true for all of the fun times, but the most likely scenario is that it's because they need to be able to swallow kids. More than your uh, average uh, village bicycle. <laughs> I mean, you can't really fit a whole kid in like a fox's mouth, especially given the shape because it's a snout. So like. Yeah. Hell, you couldn't even fit a whole kid in Mangle's mouth, so the face opens up to give the animatronic more space to grab the unknowing victim, even if the endoskeleton is there, which is way weird. Like, what the hell? Why? Why would you make the face open, but keep the endoskeleton blocking it? I don't know, maybe it can, maybe it can move around and, like, like maneuver itself, and that's why Ennard was possible? I don't know. And it's six, Catfish. This could very well all be an illusion. The actual appearance of Funtime Foxy could be horrifically disfigured, leaking and gross for all we know. Why do I think this may be the case? Well, actually thanks to Funtime Freddy. Or if, for if you can remember, we can see a sound illusion disc on the sternum when repairing him in sister location. Meaning that since that red light is flashing, all of this could be an illusion. And this not only includes Funtime Foxy's appearance, but the appearance of the other characters as well. And the whole damn sister location, honestly. Those researchers could have just been because of the disc. Same thing with the bitty baps and why we can only pick exotic butters. It makes us think that we're clicking money even though we're not and it's only exotic butters. This, it changes my whole outlook on the game and it's something that we don't talk about enough. Now I'm gonna have to include it on Tiny Details Part 7 because I'm running out of things. Halfway through in a number five, relationship. There seems to be a prevailing theory that Funtime Foxy and Lolbit are siblings. I don't understand why or where this came from. Is it just because they look the same? Because that's problematic and requires a long Twitter discussion that results in you posting an apology video that nobody forgives. But also, like, there, there is no other evidence other than looks. Which is kinda nuts, because if you look up Funtime Foxy, one of the most searched questions is Lolbit Funtime Foxy's sister. And that's just kinda, that's weird. Like, that fits the fandom so well, though. Like, most people hear something and then they trust it. And that's hella true in the FNAF fandom. People still call Crying Child Chris. Like, that's not his name. Stop it, he has no canon name. It's Crying Child. And a four floating feet. In the famous blueprint sheet from FNAF 6, we can see a wireframe version of Funtime Foxy. And in this wireframe, we see how the endoskeleton fits into the shell of the animatronic. However, thanks to this, we can see that Funtime Foxy's feet are floating? 
Why? How thick is the shell on the bottom of the foot to make the endoskeleton float so much? It's not a big detail, but it's still confusing and weird. Most of you don't care, probably, and none of you will find this scary, but I do. This is the scariest thing to me, because why the absolute f is the endoskeleton floating? What does it mean? It's a double rainbow! Ah! And a three killing machine. The animatronic, as well as the other Funtime animatronics, were built to kill. And this is evident based on its ability to open its mouth and the sound illusion discs, which we see that were trying to repair Funtime Freddy. Already talked about that. Those discs were first described and revealed in the Twisted Ones novel, meaning, like I said, that this may not be the real exterior for Funtime Foxy. And all the various other abilities I went over in the last video. All the Funtimes could very well also just be the Twisted animatronics. However, out of the blueprints Funtime Foxy has, they're one of the only ones that doesn't contain some form of child. Freddy has one, Baby has one, Lefty has the puppet which is Charlotte, there isn't really much else going on in Funtime Foxy's blueprint and it makes us wonder why. Why would Scott show us things if there wasn't additional significance about the animatronic interior, aside from the fact that the endo feet are floating? Like, it makes me think that we had to have missed something. Maybe we should, uh, go back and check. And it's your showtime. The Showtime mechanic has always confused me, but I looked it up and it's actually fairly simple. Basically, the Showtime stage has a sign telling you when the show is happening, and you need to be viewing the stage at the moment that the hour starts to avoid getting jump scared. Do it successfully and the Showtime will be delayed, which can cause issues which I'll talk about next. You can use strategy to make sure you catch it, since each hour of the game lasts 45 seconds exactly, so if you're able to count out the seconds, you can time when you need to be looking at the Showtime stage, but you can't look at it even a split second after you're supposed to, otherwise you lose. So you need to be looking at it at the moment the hour changes, rather than, oh yeah, it's, it's about to turn, let's go. Because like, it has, you have to be there before the time, you know? Like, show up three hours before your flight, yeah. Finally, in at number one, irony. The mechanic of the show time can run over 6 a.m. though, causing an instant jump scare at the end of the night in Ultimate Custom Night, causing you to lose the game after you win. However, when the character kills you, you have the chance to hear them say, shows are on the hour, not a minute before and not a minute later, which is funny because the show started late, causing me to lose 50-20 mode because of a glitch. Thanks, Foxy.